In this message we discuss the gifts of diversities of tongues, interpretation of tongues and prophecy. We provide a working definition for each, some examples and guidelines for their application and encourage simple steps to get started in prophecy. All right, we're going to rise up to our feet and make our declaration before we get into God's word. So why don't we all please stand to our feet and let's hold our Bibles high up in the air and uh, let's say this out loud, bold and strong. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I'm blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing. To many people, I receive His word. I believe His word. And I live by His word. Christ is my master. And to Him, I am an absolute surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. Please turn around to the people next to you, in front of you, behind you. Shake hands, say hello, uh, greet them, give them your name. And uh, you can be seated, please, after that. All right, let's turn the Bibles, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, we're going to read the first 11 verses, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We have been taking time to examine and study the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we are going to continue doing that this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Uh, the weekend school uh, is also going on today, yesterday and today. So uh, there are a good number of people away at the weekend school as well. Um, all right. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. The Apostle Paul writes here. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is the Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts by the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. So, when we began talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We began by saying that, you know, God does not want us to be ignorant. Like it says here in verse 1, God does not want any of us to be ignorant of these things. So what we are pursuing here is not just information. Okay, I know about the gifts. But rather we're talking about actuation, about you and me actually learning to flow, learning to exercise these gifts and moving in these gifts. And so uh, we are building on that. And what I want to encourage each of us to do is, you know, the things we hear on Sunday mornings, I want you to step into, press in during the week. You know, try it out. If you want to just use plain English, you know, try it out. Step into it. See if God will, you know, work through you, through those gifts and bless other people. Just a few things here before we get into what we want to cover today. I don't want to um, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are really about God and about other people. 
it's not about me. It's not about us, right? So let's get the focus off ourselves. It's not about me. It's about God and it's about people, right? So it's not like, you know, God, I want the gift so that I can have another badge, you know, out of the nine. How many do you have? I've got seven. <laughs> okay, two more to go. It's not about that. You know, get yourself out of the way. It's not about you. It's about God. It's about people. That God wants to do something through you to bless people. Another very important thing about the gifts of the Spirit is to understand that it's all about love. Why do you want to minister to people in the gifts? It's not because, again, it's not because, you know, your identity isn't that. It's not that it, uh, you know, it, it gives you some sort of, you know, a sta a spiritual status. It's all about love. It's about God. I love people and I want to make myself available to to you in your hands to bless these people. And God loves them. And this is one way that God expresses to them that he loves them, that he cares about them. So we need to have these our motivation right. And we will come back to this in a couple of weeks and talk more about this, the, having the right motivation as we develop in the gifts of the Spirit. But, you know, it's, it's worth repeating this so that we really get Get this right first. It's about God. It's about people. It's about love. It's not about us. We're just being vessels. Another important thing I want to emphasize is that as we explain these gifts, remember it's not about technique. It's not about methods. It's about relationship. So if your neighbor is feeling really cozy and about to snooze off, just tap them and tell them it's about relationship. <laughs> it's about relationship with God. All right. So while we will kind of, you know, talk about methods and, uh, okay, this is how it happens. I want us to focus not on the technique, not on the method, but rather on relationship. Everything comes out of your relationship with God. That's it. It's the bottom line. You develop, you focus on building your personal relationship with God. And out of that comes these expressions of the gift of the Spirit. So focus on that. Although in our, you know, teaching or our communication, we're going to, you know, get what it seems like methodology or technique. Understand that's not what we're trying to impart. Uh, it's not about the methods or the techniques. It's about God, us having a relationship with God. Out of that flow, these gifts to bless people and, uh, and to impact lives. So in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, in this passage here, we see Paul listing out uh, the nine gifts of the Spirit. And like I said uh, earlier, we could uh, envision these as our toolbox. So God's given each of us a toolbox. I say, yeah, take this with you. You'll need, to, you need this toolbox to go and serve people. You'll need this to help people. You'll need this to, you know, bless people. Take the toolbox with you. And in the toolbox are these nine tools, if you will. Having the toolbox itself isn't going to do much good unless you know how to use the tools inside the toolbox. So that's what we are after. Okay, you've got the tools inside the toolbox. Here's how, the, how we use them generally. And, uh, and uh, we can describe them. We can talk about them to some extent. But in reality, God is much greater than all our definitions and descriptions. So you'll find various ways in which these gifts operate through people, operate through you, uh, and, and impact other lives. So stay open, even for things that we haven't talked about here. Stay open uh, in the expressions and in the manifestations of these gifts. Just to quickly review a couple of things here, uh, we divided these nine gifts into three groupings. Uh, it's you know it's just for our communication sake. There are what we call as the revelation gifts, gifts that reveal something: the gift of the word of knowledge, the gift of the word of wisdom, and discerning of spirits. We talked about that last Sunday. Then there's the vocal gifts, gifts that say something by inspiration. God inspires, and then you say. So there is tongues, there's interpretation of tongues, and there is prophecy. And we'll be talking about these three today. And then there are the power gifts, gifts that do something. They cause something to happen. And uh, th that's the gift of faith, the workings of miracles, working of miracles and gifts of healings. And we will talk about those um, in the Sunday after next, after the 29th. We'll talk about that. The other thing in, uh, we try to capture here is a little um, diagram just to help us 
understand how the Holy Spirit communicates to us. We are tripart beings, spirit, soul, and body. The body, as we understand it, has five channels or senses through which information comes into us, goes into our soul, which is the uh, emotional part of us. It's com uh, our mind, our will, our emotions. That's where our logic, our reasoning, our analysis happens. So information comes through the physical senses, goes through our mind, we process it, and then we decide what to do, what to say, how to act, and so on. A parallel to that happens in the spiritual side of things. Your spirit is eternal. That's what enables you and me to commune with God or tap into the realm of the spirit. And some people use that to tap into the wrong side of things. They tap into the dark side of things. And they are empowered by evil spirits and so on. But we are connecting with God. Our spirit is connecting with God. Now the Holy Spirit communicates to us through the five senses of our spirit. The spirit, the human spirit, has the ability to hear, see, feel, taste, and touch. And the Holy Spirit uses these senses to communicate to us. So what you and I need to learn is that that's where the, the starting, that's where the Holy Spirit inspires our trends or inspires things, uh, getting us to move in the gifts. So we must become sensitive in our spirit to what the Holy Spirit is communicating to us. So become sensitive to words that come in, pictures that come in, impressions, the feelings that come into your spirit. Because that's how the Holy Spirit communicates with you, in your spirit. Primarily. I'm not, I'm not saying that's the only way, but that's the main way. He communicates to you and me in our spirit. The, the Bible says the spirit bears witness with our spirit. So become sensitive in your spirit to what the Holy Spirit is saying. You pick up. And then you minister. So we'll just remind, we reminded ourselves about that. So today let's talk about the three uh, vocal gifts. For many of us, uh, these are familiar. Uh, we are familiar with the, you know, the gift of varieties of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and uh, prophecy. And so uh, it, this might come as a good quick review for some of us. If I'm very familiar with it. For others, maybe this is brand new, and uh, I just uh, invite your attention on some of these things, and uh, uh, hopefully it will lead you uh, into, uh, into an experience of, of these gifts operating through your life. And like we said when we began, all these gifts belong to the Holy Spirit. They don't belong to me. They don't belong to us as individuals. The Holy Spirit has them. He is the source of these gifts. And therefore, all nine of these gifts can manifest through every believer. Right? We just have to open ourselves up. So God didn't give you a toolbox with just one tool inside. And give the other person a toolbox with two tools inside. No. It's the same toolbox to each one of us. And we just have to learn. Okay, God, how do I move in this? Right? And that's what we call as actuation. So let's talk about tongues, diversities of tongues. What's the definition? I mean, what definition could we talk, uh, give to this? It's the supernatural ability to speak in languages of men or of angels. Okay, Supernatural ability, meaning it's not something we have learned. So it's not like going to language school, you become a linguist, you speak five languages, man, you've got the gift of diversity. No, we're not talking about that. <laughs> we're talking about supernatural. This is given by the enabling of the Holy Spirit. So it's not the linguist, you know, the person who can learn many languages or so on. We're talking about the gift of varieties of tongues or diversities of tongues, which is given to us by the Holy Spirit. He enables us supernaturally to speak, the, as Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 13, 1, tongues of men or of angels. So you and I can commune with, speak in these languages. Now, of course, uh, all of this serves a purpose. God is not just doing this, and, and we'll talk about the benefits of this. The benefit of God giving you and me this ability to speak in languages of men and of angels. We'll come to that. Uh, just look at some examples. In the Old Testament, you don't see too many examples of this uh, expression except for one. In Genesis chapter 11, at the Tower of Babel, when, you know, up until that time, every, uh, the, the whole earth had just a single language. And then suddenly, God 
causes people to speak in languages all of a sudden, different languages, and that causes a dispersion of people around the globe because they, don't, they suddenly don't understand each other. So that's just one expression we see where God supernaturally releases multiple languages among people, and of course, the purpose there is to get them dispersed. But when you come into the New Testament, we see a lot of, the New Testament has a lot to say about this gift, the diversity of tongues. The Lord Jesus himself foretold in Mark 16, verse 17, he foretold, he said, those who believe in my name, they will speak with new tongues. So, just generally, for all of us, saying those who believe in my name, they will speak with new tongues. And so this gift really is available, is accessible for every one of us as believers who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Throughout the early church, and I'm just going to rush through this. Um, you can uh, you know, get the sermon notes if you want to study it. It's available on our website, and you can just study every reference here. But I'll just mention that throughout the book of Acts, throughout the New Testament, you find reference to speaking in tongues. Starting from the day of Pentecost in Acts, 8, uh, in Acts 2, the church in Samaria, when Peter and John went to pray for them, although it's not explicitly stated they spoke in tongues, we infer by other references to it. Saul, when he was converted, uh, he was filled with the Spirit. We know he spoke in tongues. Uh, Cornelius and his household, when Peter was speaking to them, the Lord filled them with the Spirit. They started praying in tongues. They started speaking in tongues. The believers in Ephesians in Acts 19, Paul prayed for them. And they started praying in tongues, speaking in tongues. The Corinthian church, of course, was a church where they exercised this gift. Paul writes to them, 1 Corinthians 12 and chapter 14. The Ephesian church, again, was a congregation when uh, 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 that prayed in the Spirit because Paul wrote to them and encouraged them to pray in the Spirit. And Jude, writing to all believers in Jude one twenty, he says, I want you to pray in the Spirit. So throughout the New Testament, this is a valid experience for all believers. And uh, if you look at the book of Acts, the way they operated was once a believe person got saved, became a believer, the next thing they did was to pray for that person to be filled or baptized in the Holy Spirit and begin to speak in tongues. It was normal if you want to call it standard operating procedure of the New Testament church. This is what we do. <laughs> you get saved, we're going to pray for you. To be baptized in the Holy Ghost, pray in tongues. It is normal, right? Um, now, what operations do this praying in tongues, those diversities of tongues serve? God always does this for a purpose, for the reason. Uh, what, op- what does it serve? What purpose it serve? Now, of course, praying in tongues, has a, you can use it in your private, personal uh, life. You can use it in public when you're in a, in a, in a congregational setting in a gathering like this. Uh, uh, there, it serves purposes in both situations or scenarios. And let me just run through, you know, and I'm just done this uh, as we see it in Scripture, so it's not necessarily uh, a, a one more important than the other, but just to mention several operations, benefits of praying in tongues here. All believers can speak in tongues, Mark 16, 17. Now, when you speak in tongues, according to Acts 2, 11, you're declaring the wonderful works of God. So you want to praise God. You want to worship God. And, and then you can't sing like Roshan. Then what do you do? God help us, you know. <laughs> so the beautiful thing, thank God I can at least speak in tongues, you know. And I have a creative expression now to declare the wonderful works of God. Or like it says in Acts 1046, you can praise and extol and magnify God in tongues. And so you say, God, I just want to worship you. And you take time just to pray in tongues. And you're extolling, magnifying, praising God uh, and, and worshiping Him. Um, tongues is a manifestation of the Spirit. And so uh, it gives evidence to the presence and the working of the Holy Spirit. Now, I remember in my own personal life, uh, I, was about thir- I was 13 years of age when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I started praying in tongues. And there was just a beautiful move of the Holy Spirit in our school. That was Bishop Cotton Boy's school. And uh, the moment I got full of the Holy Spirit, I wanted to get every other person I got in contact with filled the Holy Spirit. So I would sit, get my friends down. First thing, of course, get them saved. As soon as they get saved, okay, guys, I'm going to pray for you for the Holy Spirit. I can tell you right there, as teenagers, there were several young people, my classmates, others younger to me, baptized in the Holy Spirit praying in tongues. And we would gather together during short break, lunch break, sometimes after school, uh, just praying in tongues. Now, this was not some sort of a psychological, emotional thing. This was a move of God, God's Holy Spirit. I mean, how, how can a one 13-year-old force another 13-year-old to pray in tongues? You can't do that. This God moving by His Spirit. 
And we would just begin to uh, pray in tongues. And it, it was a manifestation. It was, uh, for us, this was the Holy Spirit moving uh, in our school at that time. And, and it spread over to other schools and uh, uh, ball and boys school and cathedral school. And we got those boys together. And them also got filled with the Holy Spirit. I remember praying with guys over the phone and them getting filled with the Holy Spirit. I said, okay, I've talked to you enough now. We're going to pray. Ready? Pray. And on the other end of the phone, you start praying in tongues. I mean, this was happening as, as teenagers. The Spirit of God was moving and, and doing these things. It was a manifestation of, of God's Spirit moving amongst us. Now, another thing the Bible teaches us is that uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 1, when you're speaking in tongues, you could be speaking in earthly languages or heavenly languages. Tongues of men or of angels. What an opportunity uh, for God giving us that now we are going to speak in languages given to us, which could also be languages of heaven that we are expressing, we are releasing. But what does this all this serve? Why would God want you and me to speak in languages which we haven't learned, which we don't understand? Here are some benefits. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, or 14, 2, that when we speak in tongues, we are praying mysteries. That means we are speaking things which our mind has no information or knowledge about. So imagine if I was to pray in English or in my known language, I can only pray with the information that I have. So if I pray for Sahas, I can say, God, don't make him any taller. He's tall enough. You know? <laughs> I can just pray for things I know about him. But the Holy Spirit knows everything about Suhas's life. Maybe there are things that he is just is going through that needs prayer. Maybe there are things God has planned for him five years from now that needs prayer. And so those are mysteries to me, but not to the Holy Spirit. So now if I, when I make myself available, say, Holy Spirit, I'm willing to join with you. You give me the words. I'll just release them. So now what's happened? We become prayer partners with the Holy Spirit. He gives the prayer. We do the prayer. He gives the words. He's the source of that information. All we're doing is, okay, we're making ourselves available. And so if I pray in tongues, I pray mysteries. I can pray for things that I have no, no knowledge about. It could be for myself. It could be things in the future. God could use me to pray for some believer in China. God could use me to pray for some believer, some other part of the world. I've never met. I don't know their name. But he needs an emergency prayer. Here I'm praying in tongues. The Holy Spirit can lift up a prayer through me for that person. Amen? So there's a mystery. It's good. Because now our prayer lives become limitless. And you can keep on praying. I remember those, you know, those times when I had to try to have a prayer list. You know, I'll write down everything I need to pray about, 10 things. By the time I'm on the fifth one, I'm ready to fall asleep. It's like I can't work my way through the prayer list. It's so difficult, struggle, and so on. But now I can pray hours and hours in tongues. And I'm not saying this to boast, but just facts. In many days, I've spent eight hours praying in tongues straight, other than water breaks and bathroom breaks. Eight hours. Just pray. No limit to your prayer life. You can just pray as much as you want. Just keep going. So, but what did you pray in those eight hours? You didn't understand anything? I didn't understand anything, but God understood every word I prayed. Every second of those eight hours was worth it because I was praying by the Holy Spirit. Right? And I didn't have an eight prayer list to keep me going for eight hours. How long a prayer list would you need for that? But when you're praying in tongues, your prayer life just becomes it's an explosion. It becomes limitless. You're praying the mysteries of God. And better still, it says in 1 Corinthians 14, 4, that when you're praying in tongues, it brings edification. That is, it brings inner strength. It's like your spiritual gym God gives you. He says, okay, in the natural, you want to build up strength, you know where you go. You go to your gym. You work out. Now, in the spiritual, you want to build strength. This is what you do. Pray in tongues. Because the Bible says, he who speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. You're building inner capacity, inner strength. So make yourself strong. Make yourself strong. Just praying in the spirit. Tongues, um, with an interpretation, it can bless a congregation. It's similar to prophecy. You speak in tongues, you interpret. It's equal to prophecy. It brings blessing to the congregation. Tongues can be a sign to the unbeliever. If you 
You know, you, you speak in a language you haven't learned, but it's the language that that person understands. It's a sign to him. God is saying something to him, like we see on the day of Pentecost. When you pray in tongues, you're praying, you're making intercession for the saints, Romans 8.26. So I can pray for other people, just praying in tongues. When I pray with the church, pray in tongues. I can pray. They, I don't know everybody's names. You know, this is so funny, but... It's, you know, I, I say, I shake hands somebody say, hi, hi, are you new here? No, pastor, I've been here for three years. <laughs> you know? and I, I haven't even met them. I don't know their name. But I can tell you one thing. When I pray for people in tongues, God knows that person. Even if I've never shaken hands with that person. Even if I don't know their name, the Holy Spirit knows everything in their lives. And I say, God, I pray with the church in tongues. I know Holy Spirit will cover the people who need to be covered that day. Amen? So... The Spirit of God knows. He makes intercession, the Bible says, for the saints. And uh, when you pray in tongues, you're praying according to the will of God. Romans 8, 27. You know, when we pray in English many times, we could be missing the mark. We could be praying for things we're not supposed to be praying about. But when you're praying in tongues, you will never miss it. Because the prayer is inspired by the Holy Spirit. He's giving you the prayer. You're not going to miss it. So you're safe every moment you spend praying in tongues. Uh, when you pray with the Spirit, uh, Jude says in Jude one twenty, you're building yourself up on your faith. Praying in the Spirit enables you to stay in the love of God. So, you know, we all have difficulties in loving certain people. Oh God, have mercy. <laughs> so what do you do? The Bible says when you pray in tongues, it helps you stay in the love of God. So you go pray. God, give me the grace to love that person. Give me the grace to just, you know, to reach out to that person. So we do that. Praying in tongues is part of our spiritual armor. And for some of us, praying in tongues can be a, a part of our gift, a calling in, in the body, especially those who are called to be intercessors and, and really minister that way. This is part of your calling. So, you know, I would encourage all of us to pray in tongues a lot. For those of you who are already baptized in the Holy Spirit, who pray in tongues, do it a lot. Now, Paul wrote to the Corinthians, and then he told them, guys, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than all of you. Right? And as much as you all speak in tongues, I speak in tongues more than all of you. That means he must have been doing a lot of praying in tongues. I want to encourage you to do that. Now, in your own personal life, um, uh, you can do it whenever you want to. And I want, to say, I want you to understand that you, your personal heavenly prayer language given to you by the Holy Spirit is something under the control of your will. But you can start praying anytime you want to. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians 14, verses 14 and 15. He said, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Yeah, my mind doesn't know what I'm saying. That's true. Verse 15, what is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit. I will also sing with the understanding. So he's putting it both, putting both on the equal footing. Just the way you pray in English or your own language or the way you sing in your own language, you can do the same in the Spirit. So you start praying in tongues. Now, for those of us who don't pray in tongues, I want to encourage you to do that. How do you do it? Just go home. Say, Lord Jesus, baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. God, I want to speak in tongues because this is available to all believers. And then you take a step of faith and it's going to happen. Right? It will happen. You'll start praying in tongues. Nothing holding you back. Just take a step of faith. Right? And I, I'm saying this not to demean anyone, but I remember, you know, when I was 13, there was this, this person who had just graduated from one of our leading seminaries here in India, and then he'd come down, his back was back, he was, he was assigned to a church here in Bangalore. And and uh, when he found out that this 13-year-old kid was praying in tongues. <laughs> He said, come here. You know, he called me. He sat me down. He said, Ashish, you know, you're not supposed to be praying in tongues. Now, he's graduated from seminary. He's, you know, serving in the church. I have no arguments. No arguments. I have nothing to say that I could refute what he had to say. So I, in my mind, it's like, but I do. And you can't deny somebody with an experience. I am. I had no theological way to refute, other than I just know what this is what the Bible says. And I just kept quiet. But you know now, it's been a couple of decades since that. Today, he is praying in tongues. God got him. Right? 
He is full of the Holy Ghost. He is praying in tongues and he's ministering that way. But I remember back then, he told me, you're not supposed to. Okay? So God has his own way of getting people across the line. Right? And so I don't argue. I just listen. I say, I know, just hang around us a little longer. You will get it. God will get you. And you too will be able to do this. So, uh, uh, it's available for all of us, right? Now, there's just some guidelines in Scripture in 1 Corinthians 14 on the use of tongues uh, in, the, in, in public settings. So when we are in a gathering like this, there are certain instructions there. And so we follow those instructions. For instance, one instruction is, uh, if you speak in public in tongues, then you have to interpret it. That's why you and I, I mean, you don't find me standing up here and shouting in tongues. I mean, I could do that, but then I'm obligated by Scripture to interpret that so that it makes I bring out the meaning of what was said right there's nothing wrong but when we are together the other thing it says when we are together and there are uninformed or unlearned people that means people don't understand what you're doing then it's better for you to pray in tongues personally just between you and God so I could be standing there I'm praying in tongues but I'm not disturbing anybody it's just between me and God so when you're in a gathering like this you are free to pray in tongues between you and God and that's perfectly fine. But just don't do it in a way that um, others who don't understand will question that. But when you are in a prayer meeting where everybody knows what it is, then it's fine to all of us pray out together out loud because everybody knows what's happening. But when you're in a setting where there are people who don't understand what's happening, that's when you have to be mindful. And so when you're giving a message in tongues that has to be interpreted, if you're in a gathering like this where there could be people who don't understand it, then it's better you just between yourself and God, you pray in tongues. That's perfectly fine. So those are some instructions we follow as we gather together in a public setting. So let's move on to the second one. Just move on quickly. I want to keep some time for ministry uh, before we close this morning. The second one is the interpretation of tongues. Interpretation is simply the supernatural ability to interpret, give the meaning of a message that has been given in tongues. So remember again, this is supernatural ability. That means we're not talking about some learned, uh, acquired skill. Oh, you're speaking in Chinese and I've learned Chinese so I can interpret. We're not talking about that. We're talking about supernatural ability. The Holy Spirit gives you the ability to interpret. Now when you're talking about interpretation, we're not talking about translation. Translation is word for word. Interpretation is I give you the meaning. I help you understand the essence of what is said. So sometimes a message in tongues could be five minutes long. The interpretation could be one minute long. It's like, hmm, that doesn't match. Well, it's interpretation. It's not translation. Okay? He's just given us the gist of what was said. Or it could be the other way. The message in tongues could be five minutes. And the interpretation could be ten minutes. Because he's taking a little bit more to, to get the meaning across. However, which way, which way it goes... Keep in mind, it's interpretation. It's not translation, not the word, word for word uh, translation of what was given. Right? Now, uh, in the Old Testament, I think there's just one example I could think of when in Daniel 5, there was a hand sent from God to write upon the wall uh, in King Belshazzar's palace. And he called all his wise men and said, can you read it? And can you give the interpretation? They said, sorry, you can't do that. So they called Daniel. And Daniel, by the Holy Spirit, not only read that, but he also gave the interpretation, the meaning of what was said. So that's one example we see in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, of course, Paul writes a lot about this in chapter 12 and chapter 14 of First Corinthians. So tongues and interpretation for personal use, what I would encourage you is this. You don't need to interpret your entire time of prayer in tongues. Most of the time, you're, you're praying in tongues, you're not interpreting. But here's how interpretation kicks in in your personal prayer life. That as you're praying in tongues, and there are times when you say, Holy Spirit, help me understand what I'm praying. And the Holy Spirit begins to give you the sense of what you are praying. A lot of understanding, a lot of revelation. Sometimes I'm praying in tongues and I'm, you know, the things out of the word of God are coming alive. And so then afterwards I take notes, write down, okay, here are things I can, you know, learned while praying in tongues but those are understanding the revelation is coming as you're praying in tongues it could be sometimes things that you need to do in your life it could be things about how do you solve problems you're praying in tongues over that matter and you're saying holy spirit help me understand what i'm praying right now it they are mysteries i'm very i'm actually praying the very mind of god because what i'm praying is coming from the holy spirit 
Now, when I say I, I, I mean all of us, right? When you're praying in tongues. So when you're praying in tongues, you can get an understanding of it. You don't necessarily have to interpret it, but your spirit picks up the meaning. And then you make notes, you do something with that information. Now, if you're doing it in public, so if I were to speak to you and speak a message in tongues, then I need to interpret it. That interpretation is equal to prophecy. And it also happens in a very similar way. I begin listening to what the Spirit of God is saying in my spirit, and then I bring forth the message, the meaning of what was said. Now, you don't find this happen too much these days because a lot of emphasis has been placed on prophecy, and we'll be talking about it in a minute now. And prophecy is just speaking by inspiration a message from God, which would be the same as somebody giving a message in tongues and interpreting it. So a lot of emphasis on place on prophecy. People just move in prophecy, uh, which therefore you don't see too much of tongues and interpretation in public ministry. In my own experience, I used to do the long back in the early days. Hardly do that these days. It is more of time, personal time and prayer. I get a sense of what, what's happening, what I'm praying, make notes, any insight, revelation comes, write it down, so on. But not in public settings. It's very rare. Now, if the Holy Spirit says, okay, do it, sure, we can do it. But a lot of focus now is on prophecy. So let's talk about the gift of prophecy. Are you all with me? Feeling cold? <laughs> let's talk about the gift of prophecy. This is really amazing. It's a wonderful gift. Prophecy is simply God speaking through man to man. Or God speaking through a person to another person. So it's God. He wants to get a message across to somebody. And he needs a postboy. Or he needs a postman. So prophecy is that's all. You're just being God's delivery person. Right? God says, I want to get a word across to that person. I want to get a message across to that person. Who can do it? Right? And you're saying, okay, God, I'll listen to you. And I'll go and give them that word. It's very simple. Right? So God speaking to somebody through somebody. Right? That's prophecy. It's a message from God being given to somebody. Now, prophecy, let me say this, it's not the same as good preaching. Because good preaching is a developed and acquired skill. You study the word, you, you, know, you research, you do all of that. Um, then if you're a good communicator, you have good preaching. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's valid, but that's not the same as prophecy. Prophecy is inspired utterance. That means you're not preparing the message. It's a message from God given to you at that moment, and you're delivering it to somebody. Hey, this is something God wants to give you, right? At a very basic level, prophecy serves three purposes. First Corinthians 14 verse 3 says, He who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, comfort. Edification means to build up. You're saying something that will build the person up, not tear them down. Build them. Edification. Exhortation is to encourage and comfort. They need to be soothed, uh, comforted, feel loved, feel cared for in a certain moment. And so you bring those words. But they come by inspiration. It's not something you make up in your mind. Oh, I'm looking at Kenneth. He looks a little depressed this morning. So let me go and tell him, hey, God is in control. You know, It's not like that. Okay? So you're not making this up. The Holy Spirit gives you a word. And then you deliver that to the person. Now... For those who are called into what we call as prophetic ministry, they may move in other areas. Things like correction or giving direction to people or revelation, just unveiling something that's, that's not yet seen or prediction that is foretelling. Right? So the simple gift of prophecy normally will not touch on those areas. But when you begin to just you're more comfortable in just moving in the gift of prophecy, then God will begin to take you into know, other realms here, which are more predictive, corrective, directive, revelatory in nature. But we can all journey into it. When you start out, you might start out with this very basic level of edification, exhortation, comfort. Are you with me so far? Right? So you start out that way, and then God will take you down. Don't expect to jump right in there and say, well, I didn't foretell when the date when Jesus is coming. You know, relax. <laughs> Yeah. You start off with edification, exhortation, comfort. You get comfortable doing that, bringing those kinds of words, and God will develop you further into the other things. Now, 
I'm not going to quote examples in either the Old or the New Testament because and the entirety of the Old and New Testament has prophets, has people who are bringing messages from God, men and women, prophets and prophetesses, men and women, bringing messages from God. And those of you who are familiar with the Bible know that's true. Now, we are living in a day and a time when God said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, all flesh, every person. And what will happen? They'll have visions, they'll have dreams, they will prophesy. I mean, literally, God is saying, everyone is going to have this. They're going to have supernatural messages coming to them from God in visions, in dreams, and prophecy. It's going to come. Everyone's going to have it. This is available for all of us as believers. And that's one thing I just want to emphasize, that all of us believers can prophesy. Look at some scriptures there in 1 Corinthians 14. He says in verse 1, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. He's telling all believers, not just some. All believers, all of you walk in love. All of you desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. So all of us can flow in this. right? Verse, verse 5, he says, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesy. And I really want all of you to be in this. Speak in tongues, prophesy. Verse 31, you can all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be encouraged. So again, all of you can do this so that everybody can learn, everybody can be built up. And verse 39, therefore brethren, that means all of us, desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues. So desire to prophesy. Don't hold back in praying in tongues. This is available for all of us. Now, what this prophecy, sir. What are some of the operations? How can this serve people? I've just mentioned a few things here. There could be a lot more, but just give us an understanding here. How does prophecy help people? One, it could bring encouragement. So somebody needs a word, and God just moves on your heart saying, hey, why don't you, nowadays we have all these tools, so why don't you WhatsApp this verse to so-and-so? Or... You know, if those of you on Instagram, why don't you Instagram this? Or why don't you do or why don't you share this word with somebody, with that particular person? God just stirs you. And then you wake up in the morning and say, I just really feel like I need to share this with that person. And you share it with that person. It brings encouragement to them. What you've done is you've really flowed in the gift of prophecy. It's as simple as that. That God puts something in your heart for some person and you shared it with them. You released it. It encouraged them. You've prophesied. You're not a prophet, but you have prophesied. I mean, you've brought a message to that person from God, they, through inspiration, God inspired it, to encourage that person. Very simple operation, right? can bring encouragement in people's lives. It can motivate someone into action in a specific area. And I remember, this was a long time ago, we were doing uh, somewhere in North India, I think it was, I forget the city, some, uh, it must be a I don't know, somewhere in North India. We're doing, you know, like a conference for pastors. We're teaching them about the prophetic. So we did that for about a day and a half. And then after that, I said, okay, now it's time to demonstrate. Let me just, you know, do what God says. So now the, we're working through an interpreter because it's, it's all in Hindi. So I walk up to this man. I've never seen him before other than the day, you know, he was there the previous day. This is day two of the of the conference. I walk up to him. And, and, I, and this is just saying, okay, I'm going to, you know, just demonstrate how prophecy works. I walk up to this man, and I don't know anything. But right then, at that moment, God gives me a picture of uh, a school, an orphanage, uh, a school, not an orphanage, but a village school, uh, him and his wife working and ministering there. And so I say that. I speak that to him. I say, you know, uh, I, I, God wants to let you know that you're going to be having this school, you and your wife, and you're going to be uh, doing this and this. So I just describe what I say. Now, I'm a total stranger. We've been in this place only for two days or one and a half days. And here I'm saying something. And then at the end of it, he speaks back to me through the interpreter. And he says, he and his wife have been praying to start this for 12 years. Now, total stranger. I come and tell him exactly what he and his wife have been praying about. What do you think that does to him? It encourages him. It motivates him to get into action on that. Amen? He now has a confirmation. God wants me to do this. A total stranger coming to me, speaking to me by the Holy Spirit, telling me exactly what he and his wife have been praying for about for 12 years. Can't happen by chance. And you don't find that on Facebook. 
<laughs> okay, so this is not Facebook tricks. It's listening to the Holy Spirit, right? So he can motivate that person. Maybe he's praying, but he's not willing to step out and act. God is saying, get in, come on, do it, and move in. I'm with you on it. So it can move people into action. It can reveal the potential that God has placed in people's lives. So sometimes people are hidden potential and, and their eyes are clouded to it for many reasons. You know, circumstances, situations, sometimes doubts and fears, whatever. But there is potential inside that person. And then you point it out. It's hidden from you. You don't, may not even know that person, but you point out that potential by the Holy Spirit. Hey, this and this and this. God will do this in you. And God is calling you to rise up to this. And suddenly they're awakened to what is inside them, which God has placed in them, but lies dormant. So through the prophetic word, you pull it out. Hey, this can happen. Go for it. Right? Uh, it can bring confirmation what God has been speaking to someone. So God may be speaking to somebody else. And here you come, you bring a word that's right on target. It's exactly what they're saying. You know, I remember once this was in the, in the U.S. when we were living there. I ministered in a hotel and a uh, nice air condition like this. And then <laughs> half those prayer line, you know, so people are standing in prayer. Here's this man coming. As soon as he steps, and these are all total strangers. You know, I, I don't know all these people. He's, as soon as he steps in front of me, Isaiah 59, 16 goes through my, my spiritual screen. See it. So I put my hand on him and I, I begin to say, uh, God says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. So I'm just saying the words that just came to me in a flash, in a moment. This man, total stranger, praying. I'm giving that words. Now, it may seem like a very simple thing. All you're doing is saying a word. But for him, it's volumes. Why? Because he is about to launch a ministry. And I don't know any of this. He's about to launch a ministry. God has given him a name for the ministry. And the key words for his ministry is Isaiah 59. 16. There's no way I would know that. I mean, think of all the verses you could have quoted from the Bible. <laughs> Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 12. All the verses you could have quoted. Of all those verses, that one verse at that moment, for him, it's the verse on which he has, um, you know, created the ministry for him that he's about to launch. So for him, wow, God knows me. And uh, it's confirmation. That what I'm about to step into is right. right? So it, just simple things like this could mean a lot to people. Uh, it can bring encouragement, confirmation of what God's being. It can inspire prayer for a particular matter in an individual. There are times, now God speaks of visions and dreams. And, uh, uh, and God may tell you, no, you need to be praying about this. So just put that in your heart. So now these are prophetic prayers. Meaning you're not just praying, God bless him, God bless them. But it's a prayer in that is directed because God inspired you to pray. Pray about that. Get in there. He may have spoken to you in a dream or inspired it. But this is prophetic praying. In response to what God revealed, you are now praying about things. It can bring guidance and direction into people's lives. It can bring correction. It also can bring revelation of scripture from the mind of God. Many, many times. And I don't do it too often these days. But there are times when, uh, you know, see, revelation of scripture just comes. Things just open up. They used to be, I normally don't come to the pulpit unprepared. But I have to admit, there have been times. <laughs> and I remember once, and this was a long time ago. It was Christmas Sunday. And uh, it was Christmas Day. So Christmas service. And I am not good at preaching messages on these special days. <laughs> it's like, so God, it's Christmas Day. I don't have a message. I'm standing there. Worship is going on. I don't have a message. Okay, People are there. And I'm just, oh God, Christmas Day. What should I say? I, mean, I know Jesus was born. I mean, I can say a few things. But I don't have a message to preach. And I can tell you. Worship was over. The worship leader gave me a nod. Okay, The moment I moved from my chair to the pulpits, I go, download. Uh, entire message came. It's called seven or seven lessons from the Mary miracle. Right now, it's in print. It's in some of our books. But that whole message came from the time I walked from that pulpit, sorry, from the chair to the pulpit in a flash. 
And I pretended I prepared a message. <laughs> I just delivered the message. And then I went and made my notes. <laughs> wow, I was like, God, that's a great message. Lessons from the Mary Miracle. It's in our Kingdom Builders book in chapter 2. And there's a little other book giving birth the purpose of God. Basically, looking at Mary, at what God did to Mary and how we can release the purpose of God. That whole message came in a flash. Right? It was a, you know, if you want to be technical, it's a prophetic message. It came in that moment. I just took a few steps there. Message came. Ready. Now, these days, you know, we, because we had a coordinator across so many locations, our message is all prepared by uh, Saturday morning. They go out and all that. and all typed out. But while I'm doing that, while I'm writing the message, I can know those moments when there are thoughts or uh, 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 ideas or insights that are inspired by God. Things that come out of the word, inspired, right? So that's prophetic. I mean, the Holy Spirit's quickening things, inspiring things from the word, and you can bring that out in ministry. Now, our goal, goal here this morning is for all of us to get started in learning to bring prophecy, right? How does God speak? Now, we have a weekend school on the prophetic uh, that's going on actually right now, and our uh, some of our pastors and others are teaching that, ministering there. Uh, but you can spend those two days and learn how God speaks. But very simply, in Hosea 12, verse 10, God says, when I speak to the prophets, I sp- I've multiplied visions, I've given symbols to the prophets. So prophetic, meaning speaking by inspiration, God does two things. He uses visions, meaning visuals, and symbols. So God speaks this way, right? He gives you visions, pictures, symbols, typology. Right? So, for example, he asked Jeremiah, Jeremiah, what do you see? I see the branch of an almond tree. You've seen well. But what does that mean? He says, I will watch over my word to perform it. So he gives you a symbol, but you don't go and tell people, people, I see an almond tree. No, you have to give the meaning of that symbol. Okay? God speaks that way. Jeremiah, what do you see? I see a boiling pot of water. It's facing north. Jeremiah, the meaning is judgment is coming from the north. So God is giving him a symbol, a picture, but there's a message behind that. Are you with me? So God speaks through visuals. He speaks this way through symbols. And you and I need to get used to the language of God. This is how God is speaking. Right? So how do you prophesy? A very simple, three simple steps I want to give you for you to get started. Pray, perceive, prophesy. Pray, perceive, prophecy. So pray. So, you know, if there's someone here, say, okay. Lord, I start praying. You know, you start by praying for that person. God, I pray for this person. You pray good things. Don't pray bad things. God bless him. God, take care of him. And as you're starting to pray for that person, you perceive. That means, in my spirit, is God saying something? Is God saying something through what I can feel, what I can hear, what I can see in my spirit? If he's not saying something, it's okay. Just finish your prayer and say amen. But if he is saying something, and most of the time, God does want to say something to people. He wants to encourage them. He wants to bless them. So most of the time, you will sense God saying something to that person. So you begin to perceive, what is God saying? And then what do you do? You release that message. Pray, perceive, prophesy. Very simple. All right. And we can do that. And we're going to do that in your life groups. We're going to encourage you. We're going to do a little exercise before we dismiss this morning. Pray, perceive, prophesy. You pray. Is God saying something in your spirit? You perceive. And then you release that word to the person. Now, a few thoughts here on how to release prophecy before we close here is that there are many ways to express prophecy. It doesn't always have to be spoken. Speaking is one way. But you can write it. Some people can paint it. Some people can draw it. Uh, some people can sing it. Some people may act it out. There are many ways to express an inspired message that God puts in your heart. Okay, simplest and easiest, of course, is just to say it. You know, this is what God is saying. This is what I feel God is saying. Simplest. But you can also write it down and share it with a person 
you feel uh, it, it needs to go to. So now the words you choose to communicate the message, the tone of your voice and uh, well, when you deliver is in your control. The Bible says the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets. So it's not like, you know, God is speaking to you now. We get up, run across the hall, jump on somebody and give them the word. That's not it. You know, if God's put something in your heart, you can hold on to it till the right time to give it. Right? So it's in, in your control. You're not going to lose that word. It's in your control. The tone of your voice, how you give it, you can, it's in your control. The timing of when you deliver the message is in your control. Right? Uh, you don't have to do it right away. You can do it a day later. Whenever you feel ready, you, you can do that. Allow yourself to be judged. None of us are above uh, being judged. The Bible tells us that we must test all things and hold on to what is good. So all prophecy must be judged. So never give a prophecy saying, hey, I'm absolutely right. You better do it. No. Say, this is what I feel God is saying. I'm releasing it to you. You please test it. You please judge it. If it makes sense, then you act on it. Otherwise, you're free to leave it aside. So all prophecy must be judged. Allow yourself to be judged. Uh, don't be too hasty to say, thus says the Lord. It's much better to say, you know, I, I feel this. This is because it is what you're feeling in your spirit. Or I sense this, right? Don't say, thus says the Lord, thou shalt this and that. No, just, just relax. And you don't have to use King James. God doesn't speak in King James. <laughs> okay. Uh, remember, we know in part and we prophesy in part, 1 Corinthians 39. That means God's not going to show you everything. He's going to only show you the bit that, wants, that he wants to be said. So don't worry if what you say doesn't seem like earth shattering and revealing the past, present, and future. It doesn't have to be. Just speak the part God puts in your heart. We know in part and we prophesy in part is what the Bible says. Prophecy can flow along with other gifts. And a uh, few things here. Remember, you can prophesy to the unsaved. These gifts are not just for believers. So when you go into your workplace, you ask God. So maybe you're talking to somebody and in your thing. Say, God, is there a word I can speak to somebody? You know, in your office. Is there somebody I can speak to that you want me to reach out to? You want to touch? So it doesn't have to be used only among believers. These gifts can be used to serve or reach out even to those who don't know Jesus. So ask God. And God may say, you know, just, he may just give you thought. Go to that person and just speak this word of encouragement to that person. It can mean a lot to that person. It can open up an opportunity to share about Jesus. So use these gifts everywhere and can serve the unsaved. Paul writes about that in 1 Corinthians 14, 24 and 25. He says, you know, if, you, if all, prof, all of us prophesy, you know, if all of us are flowing in this, how powerful it will be. Because if an unbeliever comes in or an uninformed person comes in, Many people can convince him, not just the pastor. Many can convince him. Many can convict him, convict, and he will fall on his face, and he will say, God is among you. Wow, think about that. Imagine if all of us are flowing in the gifts of the Spirit, and that's what we want. When people don't know the Lord, come in. Anyone out there can minister to that person, and that person will say, God is in this place. That's what God wants. Amen? Last two thoughts here is, as you and I, you know, uh, serve God and serve people with the gift of prophecy, don't try to be a fortune teller. Okay? See, fortune tellers, people go and say, hey, I want to hear about this, I want to hear about that, tell me about that. No. God has given us the gift of prophecy, but we are not fortune tellers. Okay? Stay with the word of God. Teach people the word of God. This is what the word of God says. Now, if God is giving you a specific word, then you share that with them. But otherwise, don't try to, you know, be a fortune teller and try to, you know, tell them about what to do and whom to get married to and where to go and where to live. And that's not our business. Okay. So don't misuse this. And lastly, don't practice witchcraft. What does that mean? It means, you know, what is witchcraft? Witchcraft is basically using spiritual powers to control people. Right. So you use your spiritual power. You use authority to control a person's behavior and actions uh, and thoughts. But you don't do that to the gifts of the Spirit. Every gift of the Spirit must be submitted to people. If you want to, you receive it. People must be free to say, I don't want to. Right? So if you have a prophecy, you release it and say, I feel this is what God is saying. You're free to judge it, test it. If it makes sense, receive it. If it doesn't, free to leave it, discard it. They should have that freedom. Otherwise, if you're trying to control and manipulate people using these gift of prophecy and other things, that is witchcraft. 
And unfortunately, some people move into that area where it's like, whatever I say, you have to do. And I will prophesy to you when you wake up, what time you go to sleep and all of that. Say, hey, you're off in witchcraft. That's trying to control people using spiritual power. That's not what the gifts of the Spirit are about. Amen? Okay. So, we're going to do a simple exercise now. Okay? Before we uh, wrap up here this morning. What I want to do, each of us, you can use your pen and paper or you can use your phone. You're free to do that. Your permission to do that. But don't answer calls. <laughs> I want you to think of one person. One person is close to you. Friend. Anyone. Right? And I want you to do these three things. Pray. Start praying for that person. Just pray. Say, God, I pray for John, whoever. And then perceive. Is God saying something to John? Pray for John. Perceive. Is God saying something to John? Then, instead of prophesy, you can write down. Right? Just write down. So that after service is over, you can give that word to that person. You know, you can text it to that person. You can write it to that person. Whatever. Okay? Any close friends, somebody who will not retaliate and say, man, you were wrong. I've got to stone you. <laughs> somebody will not do that. But somebody will understand that even if you are wrong, it's okay. Think of one person, pray for that person, and then pray, perceive, is God saying something for that person? It could be a simple word of encouragement, or it could be something that will be very monumental in their lives. Something like, you know, you encouraging them to take the step that they are thinking about, so whatever. Right? Pray, perceive, then write down. Can you all do that? Just um, I'm good, just three minutes, that's all. You know, if you don't get anything, it doesn't matter. If you can't think of any person, okay, relax. There's no pressure. Okay, this is a little opportunity to experiment, to try, okay? For you to take the plunge into the swimming pool and see if you can swim, right? If you don't want to jump in today, it's okay. Don't worry, okay? But three minutes. Try to do something. Pray for somebody that is close to you that you know is a friend you care about, or maybe God may even remind you who to pray for, perceive, is God saying something to that person? Then you write down, make a note of it. Then we will get ready to close. Okay, why don't we just rise to our feet, please. We're going to worship the Lord for a few moments. And uh, thank you. Thank you, God. Father, we just worship you this morning. God, I just pray for people here who, for whom, Lord, all of this may be just maybe new. I pray that by your Spirit, you'll encourage them and open our understanding, God, to receive these things and I pray you'll bring us into that experience of these things. So this will become normal for us, God. Father, for those who may not be praying in tongues, I just ask that you will create that desire and that you'll give us, Lord, the grace just to let heavenly languages come forth, just to take a step and be filled with the Spirit and experience this personally. You invite us. You bring us into this, Father. For those of us who are just getting started in, in learning how to hear from God and prophesy and bring a word of encouragement to other people, and I pray that you will just take us on this journey, Father. And I pray that all of us, all of us in this place, will hear from God and will speak words of edification exhortation, comfort to other people and will be able to speak the mind of God into other people's lives. Take all of us on this journey. And God, help us take it to the streets. Help us take it to our schools, our colleges, our offices. and Make us keenly aware of what you want to say to people, Lord. That we'll be able to speak into people's lives. Like how Jesus did at the well to that woman who came to draw water. It was just another day 
but it changed her life. God, it might be just another day in the office, but one word can change somebody's life. One prophetic word can change, it can alter the entire future of somebody. It might just be another day in school or another day in college. God, you can use people here to touch somebody. Oh God, do it. Holy Spirit, we invite you to flood our lives, saturate and overflow through each of us that wherever we go, your presence, your working will just effuse through us, God. Will just flow out through us to touch those around us, God. That they may know the love of God. They may know there's a God in heaven who knows their name. Who knows every hair, every strand of hair on their heads. Who knows exactly where they are. Use us, God. Use us that way. We thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless you, God. So we give you thanks. We worship you, Father.
gather together, Lord, the power of God will be evident, that miracles, that healings, the demonstrations of your power, God, will be evident in our midst, and the manifestations of all the gifts will be evident, God. We just invite you, Spirit of God. 
want to see that. We want to see more. More of your presence, more of your power for Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ and the love of God our Heavenly Father and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always in Jesus name Amen Amen We trust that this message was a blessing to you We'd love to hear from you you can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website, apcwo.org, for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.